Hello and welcome to the Chiaroscuro Jazz Podcasts. I'm George Graham, Director of Artistry and Repertoire for the Venerable Jazz Label, celebrating its 50th anniversary with over 100 titles by some of the world's great jazz musicians. This time we feature baritone saxophonist, composer, and arranger Jerry Mulligan, and a Chiaroscuro album spotlighting his compositions in a distinctive two-piano quartet. Jerry Mulligan was born in Queens, New York in 1923 and developed an interest in jazz through time he spent with his African-American nanny who had player piano roles by Fats Waller and others. By his teens, he was playing saxophone professionally with jazz bands in Philadelphia and soon showed his aptitude for writing arrangements and was making money selling his arrangements to various jazz and dance bands. Mulligan moved to New York in 1946 and wrote arrangements for Gene Krupa and Claude Thornhill's innovative band. He frequently sat in with the Reed section. In 1948, Mulligan became part of a nine-piece band led by Miles Davis, whose recording as The Birth of the Cool became some of the most influential in jazz in the period following the innovations of Charlie Parker and the bebop movement. Mulligan remained active until his passing in 1996, being involved with other influential groups, a pianolist quartet with Chet Baker, then his concert jazz band in 1960, and various smaller groups, as well as orchestral recordings. Jerry Mulligan recorded close to 50 albums as a leader or co-leader. In 1976, Mulligan recorded for Chiara Schiro with what he called his new sextet in an album called Idle Gossip. Here are two tracks from that album, first the original title piece, then Mulligan's arrangement of the traditional song Waltzing Matilda. Here is Jerry Mulligan on baritone and soprano saxes.
Jerry Mulligan on baritone and soprano saxes from his chiaroscuro album Idle Gossip, first the title track and just now the traditional tune Waltzing Matilda. The personnel included Tom Fay on piano, Dave Samuels on vibes, Mike Santiago on guitar, George DeVivier on bass, and Bobby Rosengarten on drums, recorded in November 1976. Jerry Mulligan has been a great influence to generations of jazz musicians, and shortly after his passing in 1996, an interesting tribute album was put together, produced by Chiaroscuro founder Hank O'Neill, with two pianos. As mentioned, Mulligan was known for his pianoless quartet, but this tribute recording featured two outstanding contemporary pianists, Bill Charlap and Ted Rosenthal, with Dean Johnson on bass and Ron Vincent on drums, all of whom played with Mulligan at various points. Here they are with the Mulligan classic, Line for Lions.
Pianists Bill Charlap and Ted Rosenthal, with Dean Johnson on bass and Ron Vincent on drums, doing Jerry Mulligan's Line for Lions. One of the distinctive aspects of Chiaroscuro CDs is the conclusion of jazz speak tracks, with the artists talking about the music in their own words. Here are the members of the quartet. Hi, I'm Dean Johnson. Hi, I'm Ted Rosenthal. I'm Bill Charlap. And I'm Ron Vincent. And uh, this project uh, came about last October, which would be October of uh, 95. I was began thinking about it and approached Jerry with the idea, and he thought it was a good idea. Uh, no one had really recorded a lot of his music in trio format, and that was the original idea, and it evolved from there, uh, at one time going to like three and four piano players, and then back down to two piano players. And uh, what you've heard is the the best of the four piano players. Or, or the fruit <laughs> of the matter. Uh. Well, I, for one, uh, had a wonderful time working with Bill Charlap. We uh, met many times in Steinway's basement, and uh, it's like being two kids in a candy store with the plethora of concert grand pianos, and we had a wonderful time working out arrangements and playing together, and... Uh, musically interacting and then once we had the whole band that was even uh, a nicer experience and uh, it was just great to think about piano ensemble which is a pretty rare thing for most piano players because most of the time obviously there's just one of us in a band so it's a nice a nice uh, new dimension and a nice way of thinking for me and I it was nice for me also because working with Ted uh, is particularly easy in a two piano format because we think in a lot of ways alike in that we have diverse influences and I think we're able to not, well, always be playing with ten fingers at a time um, and thinking about arrangements and things like that and finding a function. And uh, playing two pianos is really a, a tricky sort of business. You have to sort of be willing to bend at any time and get out of what you're used to playing to make the music come out, be able to renegotiate what you're playing quickly. It's also nice to play with Ron and Dean. You know, both Ted and I played with Jerry Mulligan with this rhythm section, so we're familiar with not just playing with each other as rhythm section mates, but also playing with Jerry Mulligan, this music, so we have a particular connection. Um, was nice to actually go and hear this band uh, with Ted, the Jerry Mulligan Quartet with Ted on the SS Norway, which I think was the last time that Jerry performed. And the band sounded great. And it was great for me to hear that because, you know, to hear somebody else's voice in a role that uh, I had played and played a lot of the same music was, it was very enlightening. It was a great way of actually hearing Ted's playing because hearing him some of the, hearing him play some of the same music showed uh, what made his perspective different than mine and uh, I really enjoyed it. You know that that brings me to something funny. We're trying to think of the name for this band, <laughs> and you know on pretty much all of the promotional stuff. Anytime we were playing somewhere, in any jazz festival around the world or in, anywhere, the billing for Jerry Mulligan's quartet was always Jerry Mulligan and the Jerry Mulligan Quartet, with his name appearing twice. So I think maybe maybe we are the Jerry Mulligan Quartet. <laughs> no, it's finally <laughs> happened. I think so. Well, he was famous for the pianoless quartet, and so now in the next life he'll be famous for the two piano quartet. <laughs> that's, that's right. We hope so. Going back to what you were saying, Bill, about you know doing it with two pianos, uh, as I mean drum, playing. Yeah, with not, yeah, pianist. that's exactly what I mean, kind of. Um, but as a drummer, trying to fit in in into the center of that was definitely a challenge. Uh, 20 fingers, oh my god. All right, you can turn the mics <laughs> off now. <laughs> but that took a, a day or two to get used to uh, finding a place in there. To, to At the same time, Jerry was so specific in his musical directions, especially about his songs, that I, I immediately... And, and about his pianists. Well, yeah. that's true. It just all the way around about what he wanted musically from each and member. From everyone, of the, Yeah, sure. from every member of the band. 
So I found in a way it was probably doing this project, I think for all of us in a way, a lot easier because we all had a slew of directions that have been given to us and we know kind of the music intimately. Well, that was the challenge of working with Jerry is to, to be able to play his concept. Yeah. At least for me. And yeah, and uh, he he knew exactly what he wanted, not always capable of saying of, of of breaking it down to the common denominator so that you understood exactly what it was. So you had to develop kind of a sixth sense to figure out what he wanted. That was the challenge for for me as a drummer in that band, anyways. It's probably true. Um, well, the thing about Jerry also is that he wasn't just a horn player. He was a composer and a ranger. And all of those things were present in his playing and in the way that he would lead a band. He was a very unique and complex individual, yeah. <laughs> I think, um, you know, but uh, it's very hard not to have a real fondness for him, and I, I'm, I for one, am going to miss him a lot. Yeah, you know, we all here. miss him, absolutely. Bill Charlap, Ted Rosenthal, Dean Johnson, and Ron Vincent talking about the Jerry Mulligan Songbook Project. Now here's more music from the session with a tune that Mulligan wrote for the Miles Davis Birth of the Cool Session, Rocker, followed by another Mulligan tune that has become a standard among jazz musicians, Walking Shoes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Music from the Chiaroscuro release, the Jerry Mulligan Songbook, with pianists Bill Charlap and Ted Rosenthal, bassist Dean Johnson and drummer Ron Vincent, with Rocker, written by Mulligan for the Miles Davis Birth of the Cool Sessions, and Walking Shoes. You can find more information about this recording, Jerry Mulligan's Idle Gossip, which we heard earlier, and some hundred other outstanding Chiaroscuro recordings at chiaroscurojazz.org. This is George Graham. Thanks for joining us for this Chiaroscuro podcast, and join us next time for more music from great jazz artists.